And we're back with TGIF. We're here to spill the tea and break down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. Now sit back, relax, and get ready to sip this hot tea. Please welcome Al Reynolds. Hey, Al. Hey, what's going on, Claudia? Yes, excited to be here on this Monday night. Are you? Uh, yeah, let's go. You sound <laughs> Please welcome Armand Wiggins. Hello, Armand. How you doing? What's going on, guys? I'm here. I'm here. I, I got my tea today. Got my tea because my my throat is a little dry. I think I think them vapes is getting to me, Claudia. I like, told you. Them vapes is not good. So I'm I'm putting I'm taking a break off them vapes because I think they they take my vocal cords out. They do that caffeine and uh, and sugar, it, unfortunately, all the good stuff. Yeah, it dries you out. So I'm over here struggling a little bit, but we're gonna get through it. All right, Al, you struggling today? You feeling good? How you feeling? <laughs> no, I'm not struggling. You know, this is my third job of the day and one more to go after this. So I'm just trying to pace myself. All right. Well, how was everybody's weekend? It was good. I mean, I chilled. I went out with some of my friends. We went hiking. So I had a really good, productive, uh, fun weekend. So it was chill. Al? Yeah, I was traveling back from the East Coast. You know, I spent the week um, with our Fox 5 DC family. I did three shows and then I had to teach. So I was traveling back on Sunday, Saturday and Sunday to come back here. So I, I spent the weekend traveling. All right. Um, I was cast as a lead in a movie called All I Want Is, I'm sorry, that was on the, the other one, called Do It For The Gram. And uh, we had very long hours. We did Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So I ha have had no time off. But the role is, I can't wait for you to see. Like, I can't wait. It's actually done really well. So. Is this BET Plus or Tubi? Like, where where is this? I, I don't I don't know. They usually make these movies and they try to sell them to the the the, the networks. So we'll okay. see. I told y'all Columbus Short was going to be in it, but something happened with him, so he did not make it. So they had to replace him last minute, unfortunately. Because mm. I love working with him, but um, still going to be a good movie. I mean, I mean, so it was going to be better with him, but yeah. So we got to just you know we just got to go with the flow. Oh, also I'm here in Dallas, so that's like kind of ground zero pretty much for the eclipse. So I got to see the eclipse today. That was so a lot. It was so cool. And the city, the way it just, the lights went down and then came back up, it was really beautiful. And I just wonder, what did people think back in the day before they knew like what was going, you know, I don't know, were they freaking out like way back when? <laughs> I don't know. What, I, what day was it? Today. Today. Was today. Oh, it was today. Oh, okay. See, yeah. I'm working so hard. I didn't even see, I didn't even know it happened. Okay. Well, you're not drinking tonight, uh, Armand. Al, how you doing? You uh... No, nope. I'm on water. Okay. Well, it's going to be that kind of show. It's fine. We got it. <laughs> Let's get to these topics on this Eclipse Monday. We have a new couple alert. Mm. Over the weekend, Russell and Kamora Lee Simmons, 21-year-old daughter, Akeo, a Aiko, I'm sorry, Aoki, sorry. Oh, it was spelled out like that. Lee Simmons broke the internet after she was spotted kissing her 65-year-old new boo, restaurateur Victorio Asaf during their vacation in St. Bart's. Russell Simmons replied to the backlash and told TMZ that he doesn't plan to kick and scream about her choices. He said, all I can do is offer my advice and unconditional love. What are your thoughts on this new couple alert? And let's keep it real. Do you approve of this? 44 year age difference. Al, what do you think? Well, if we're keeping the same energy that we did when we were talking about the women being older than the men, then I guess we're in support of this, right? Because right here on this platform, we said that men do it all the time. And this is just an example of men doing it all the time. Plus, I mean, like parents, like child. We know that Kamor was 16 when Russell uh, met her. And we also know that Russell was 35, that they got married at this island, St. Bart's. This is where Kamor and Russell got married. So she's just doing what her parents did, no? Okay, our mom, what do you think? I don't know. It just feels really, really awkward. And I have to keep the same energy that I kept for Dre. Like, this is a little bit worse. I mean, 65, like, in 21, it feels a little perverted for me. I'm not really into it. Um, he could be her grandfather. This feels nasty. It just feels like, like, what are you possibly getting out of this? You know what I mean? This is not a real relationship. This is clearly a fetish thing for him. And then for her, this is clearly a money thing. You know, like, you couldn't possibly have be in love here. There's no love. Here. There's no emotion here. This is definitely transactional or, you know, a, a fetish to me. It's weird. I don't like it. Uh, her father, Russell Simmons, is 66 years old and her mother, Kamora, is 48. 
And uh, she was 17. Uh, Kimora was 17, supposedly, when she met Russell, right? Is that what we're saying? I think that's where we're making a correction. I just want to be clear here. Uh, oh, we have some comments. Christopher Live Love, who's hilarious, said, that poor girl, she's traumatized from her daddy. Mm -hmm. And Tanya Christopher said, and they're, uh, if they're happy, I'm happy for them. And um, Ayo Mike said, hey, Russell was old when he got with Kimora. May run in the DNA. And here for fun said, what a damn shame. Daddy issues for sure. I hate that for her. I think this is the most ridiculous photograph. Like they picked the wrong, the, the worst one, of course. But a 44 year age gap. I talk about me not wanting to even go into the 30s as far as like being like a generation. Like just, we, we don't know the same music and movies and stuff like that. Can you imagine what their conversations are about? Like, seriously, like, what are they talking about? Like, where do looks, they relate? <laughs> she looks like a little girl in that picture. And he looks, he does. He looks like her elderly physician. Mm. Yeah. Oh, I, I, girl, the old man is not, that's too much. Look at his Yeah, body. this almost makes like 10 years or 18 years look like nothing. Like, you know, I almost can deal with that. But 44 years, that's a big difference. You know what I mean? I could almost do a 10 year, 20 year. Okay, so y'all gonna if anyone, and the audience, if y'all gonna co-sign this, y'all better leave Dre alone, man. If you're gonna let the, this is gonna be okay, because it's at 44 years, y'all. He's definitely gonna have a grandkid that young. He could. Yeah. All right. It seems like the Combs family cannot catch a break. We have an update. It's been reported that a woman filed a lawsuit against Christian Combs after accusing him of sexually assaulting her on a yacht back in 2022. Now, Christian is being accused of assault, battery, sexual assault, and intentional infliction of emotional distress. What are your thoughts on this news? And is this an, an example, like the last story, like father, like son, like father, like daughter? What do you think, Armand? What do you think? I feel like when it rains, it pours. And I feel like, you know, Tyrone Blackburn is on this too. So he's like, he's, he's trying to pull it all. He's getting into everything he can. He's really literally going to drain this ditty well till it's dry and everyone attached to him. So I think that people need to make sure, you know, that they have nothing in their closets. They have their squeaky clean because, you know, these people are coming for everything. Everybody attached to Diddy, Diddy will be investigated. And if there's the slightest chance, they will be hit with a lawsuit. But what's interesting is they're saying that, you know, Tyrone Blackburn is over this. He's over the Little Rod uh, 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 lawsuit. But None of them have been served. Like, he's just filing these lawsuits, but these people are not being served. So is this just sensationalism in order to, you know, kind of tear down the reputa uh, reputation of these people? Because they're not actually ended up going to court. Mm, okay. Al, what are you thinking? I know over the weekend there was, like, some audio that allegedly came out. I haven't heard it all, so I don't know if y'all heard about that. But Al, what do you right, think about right. that? I haven't heard the audio. I, I, unless... I'm missing some. I don't think that this young lady has to serve Christian Combs. Mm. Uh, this is a lawsuit where she's claiming sexual assault. You know, Claudia and, and Armand, I just feel like this is so unfortunate, but necessary in any ways. And hear me out. I say necessary because I've said it on this show on multiple occasions that we need to create an environment where people feel comfortable coming forward when they are assaulted and not waiting 10 years later. And this is an example of that. So I'm glad that people are starting to feel courageous enough to speak up on their assault. Now, where I feel like it's unfortunate is I think like Amon said, this is the tip of the iceberg for the Diddy situation and the Diddy case. And it's super sad for Christian Combs because this is affecting him by proxy of their father, you know, not taking any, not taking any responsibility off of this grown kid, because we all know that he is a grown kid. But this can be argued, right? It can be argued that it's a learned behavior and that he's emulating what he saw. And so he doesn't, you know, like father, like son, kind of, right? So, or the apple doesn't fall too far from the tree. So to me, it's it's just unfortunate because you know he's it's not that he's catching a stray, a stray it's just that people are feeling more comfortable exposing them and not afraid of their power and control in the industry we have some comments um shenny beanie said everyone's throwing what they can to see what sticks and joseph savage says i don't care he's too cute to be snatching kitty cats <laughs> God, yeah. yo. that's what i said the other day <laughs> you know what i really quiet it's, I have to say, it, it's kind of ignorant to think that someone can't be attractive and be 
snatching vagina or at, or butt because that's what they do. Darren Sharper right now is one of the finest men that was ever in the NFL, and he's in prison for date rape. You know what I mean? Like it, you can be good looking and still snatch. It's not really about that. It's like entitlement, power. power I heard thing. there was some audio where you can hear the girl saying, "Stop touching me! Don't get off my leg! Don't touch that!" I'm gonna look into that and and we'll talk more about it when we when we all can hear that. But you know, if you see your dad getting away with stuff, I mean, if you're doing all this stuff allegedly, right? And you, I'm sure it's not totally hidden. Parents think that their kids, oh, they don't know. Kids pick up on a lot of stuff. You know, you're their first teacher. So I wouldn't be surprised if just mannerisms on just like uh, mentality could possibly be passed down. You know, I'm not saying it did, but I'm just saying, you, you know, when you have a father that is in, 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 in so much stuff like this, it's kind of hard to not pick up on some of these uh, bad habits. Uh, Rosanna Bibbins says he learned from watching Diddy. Well, I, I was going to jump in here and say I wouldn't even be, you know, surprised if Diddy kind of wasn't teaching him or telling him this is what you do, you know, you have power. So I think, you know, allegedly, like in my opinion, I feel like, you know, Diddy could have taught him like this is how you handle these situations and, you know, we're above the law, like we can make things go away. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like he would be taught that kind of stuff as well because that's like his mini me. You know, yeah. and I think Diddy mm -hmm. kind of has that personality where he'd be like, you're going to be just like me. And, and like, I'm going to walk you through it. Like, he mm -hmm. kind of gives me that personality. So I wouldn't be surprised. You know, I want to mention something real quickly. It has nothing to, uh, I have to insert this in this story. Um, what happened over the weekend. I, I was uh, kind of catching a stray with this Diddy stuff, an old picture of us at the BET Awards backstage with several people. But there's a picture where I have my hand on his face and he's like cozy like, next to me. It was, mm -hmm. one, it was the first time I met him and that was it. Never hung with him or was around him after that. And uh, people kind of ran with that story and there was some reckless talk about me being possibly a sex worker, one of his girls. Mm. And I actually had to have Tasha K serve the letter over the weekend and she did uh, go on her live and she did in her shady way, but she did uh, take, it, take it back. And she did send me a, a correspondence that she would have all of her platforms remove it because it was in fact very false and defamatory information about me. And I'm just going to let issue this warning to other bloggers out there and YouTubers. Um, I've let my name be involved in a lot of scandals and didn't say anything thinking y'all know better, but I'm not playing with any of you anymore. And I am willing to sue whoever continues to do this. So if you want to put me in this Jay-Z controversy, this Diddy controversy and lie in my name and not even ask me for a comment, I'm, I am definitely coming after you. My, my attorney is Chris Brown, Google him and he never loses. I'm just saying. Keep my name out of lies. You can mm. talk about me, but make sure it's it's true because, you know, and he he got quick action. Within 24 hours, it was down. Okay. Thank you, Tasha. I appreciate you fixing that. Switching gears, Gerard Carmichael revealed an interesting fetish that he tends to enjoy with his white boyfriend. Gerard said, I sometimes joke with him that our relationship is like that of a slave and the master's son who, like, teaches me how to read by candlelight. And he added... I like that joke. That's my burden. I think that bleep's hilarious. Do you think he's taking it too far? And do you have any controversial fetishes? Alice, go to you first. <laughs> well, yeah, because I'm the fetish king here. Um, <clears throat> I'm sure I got some controversial fetish, but in this particular, this, this is why I'm torn here, because I, I feel like I'm being a hypocrite because this felt inappropriate to me. It made me very uncomfortable to hear. It feels like a lot of self-hate speech, if you ask me. I really uh, encourage the soulmates to go online and listen to how he told the joke. Because he was like, oh, Massa, and I'm going to serve you real good, Massa. So it, it just says to me, does does uh, Jared or Jared Carmichael, do you have any black friends around you on a regular basis that you run your jokes by? Because I can't imagine if he told this joke and how he told it on that stage with all of those in the audience laughing, that, that they would say that that was okay. To me, like I said, it felt like hate speech. And this could be, this could be why his mother is concerned. Now, you know, mothers be knowing stuff. Mothers be knowing stuff about their kids. So this could be concerning. This could be why his mother is not as supportive as she, as people felt she should have been according to the documentary. But for me, and listen, I, I, I believe in role playing. I like fetishes. I don't think there's anything wrong with putting on a costume or two, but this felt inappropriate. It's felt uncomfortable and it felt like self-hate to me.
All right. Armand, what do you think? I totally agree. I, I'm never comfortable with this. And we kind of talked about this in one of the other shows about how it is in West Hollywood and how it is with, you know, these white men and black guys. They treat you like a fetish. And it's not even just being out and about. You can even see it, see it in adult, you know, films. Like, it, it's a thing. Like, they the way that they edit it, the way that they, you know, curate, like, the filter on the on the on the on the content like it's a thing that really goes deep and i just feel like this screams like white acceptance this screams like hey i'm the black guy that's okay with you using the n word around me you know what i'm saying and i can be your freaky boy toy and i'm black too and i'm dark skin with a black family so it's okay you know and so that you know he feels like he can get a, you know invited to parties and you know his status goes up in in hollywood because he's the cool black guy that doesn't take anything personal and also he'll let you call him the n word and let you race bait him and you know and live out all your deep feedy pinky fetishes through him. Like, it's really, 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 really sick. And it's unfortunate that Black men, Black gay men have to go through this and do this and subject themselves to this kind of, you know, stuff just to get a little bit of a piece of the pie. You know? Like, yeah. we barely know who he is. And you're doing all of this. You know, disgusting. The, I, I miss the time where people kept inside thoughts inside. And, you know, like, there's bring back shame. If you have a fetish where you're the little slave boy and you have your master teaching you how to read and write stuff by the candlelight, maybe you want to keep that to you, yourself. Yeah. It's not a good look. You look ridiculous. I don't know anything about your comedy, but now I know you are a coon. That's what I know from this story. And now that's what I know you for. And now our viewers who probably don't know much about your comedy will know you for that. Now, I get being edgy because I, I actually used to do a lot of edgy stuff back in the day with the commentary that I gave. Had to tone it down and temper it down as the times change and we grew. Um, but in 2024, right, in this climate that we're in where we are, they are literally turning back the hands of time here in America with black people, with rights, with DEI and taking black heads out of classrooms. This is the joke you think is good to tell in a room <laughs> of mixed company and, and make slave jokes. If you want your white man to treat you like a slave, fine. Once again, keep it to yourself because it doesn't make us like you more. And if you think white people like you more now, no, it's kind of like when you get patted on the head, you a good boy. That's what you got just now. And I'm sorry. I, I think it's whack as hell. Um, come again next. Find out what's on Oman's hit list. And later, did Lil Scrappy violate his divorce agreement? Keep it here, soulmates. Hit that like button. We'll be right back. Scene 103, take one. I thought we'd be on the same page about this, and we're not. How do I know the way I'm going to respond to it? I want you to get the vaccine, because I want you to be safe. What if you end up in the hospital? That's what I'm scared of. If you was to die, man, that would literally kill me, man. Can I hug you? Yes. <laughs> if it made you feel that way, bro, I would probably do. I love you, man. I love you, too. This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear, to jog where we please, to wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter.
Welcome back to TGIF, where we never cease and desist from giving you a good, clean, honest, and factual <laughs> show. <laughs> it's not that hard, actually. Day. It's not that hard to tell the truth. All you got to do is pick up the phone and ask or just research. All right, every week there are newly released singles from your favorite artists, <laughs> a new concert, music videos, you name it, and we are going to cover it all in a segment we like to call Armand's Hit List. Hey. All right, Armand, what's on your hit list today? Okay, listen, I'm so excited about this week's um, hit list because tonight's hit list is all about collaborations with a dose of social media beef, okay? So let's get into some things. Nicki Minaj recently tweeted about a potential collaboration with Sexy Red. She wrote, you got your verse for FTCU? I'm finna drop the remix, Sexy Red. Left Pound Town to go to FTCU. A remix for remix? Now, for me, I think this will be a great moment for Nicki Minaj and Sexy Red to collab. Let's just be honest, Sexy Red literally is the moment right now. She is the hottest female rapper in the game. And I think Sexy Red has really figured out her audience. Men love her, women love her, kids love her. And so anything that Sexy Red gets on is, is a, an immediate hit in the streets. It's getting played everywhere. And um, Nicki Minaj's FTCU record is a banger as well. So, so for them to have that collaboration, I think will be great. And I think Sexy Red should definitely give Nicki Minaj that moment because honestly, Nicki Minaj is really what brought Sexy Red to the forefront by hopping on that Pound Town 2 remix. Now, I will say this, Nicki, though, you got to give Sexy Red a music video, okay? Uh, Sexy Red is old video. Sexy Red tweeted, it was like, okay, music video, and the song, and Nikki, like, girl, we on tour, so I don't know if I'm gonna be able to give you a video, but just in the verse in, and she's got some other people on the record as well, so I'm excited for that collaboration because I really feel like it's genuine there, and they make good music together. So, um, speaking of uh, Nicki Minaj, rapper Glorilla is calling for Cardi B and Nicki to come together and break some bleeping records in her new single, or new song, I. Now, Glorilla stated, I just pray one day that bad bleeps will come together because Cardi and Nicki on a track would break some bleeping records. Now, here's the thing. I know a lot of us love to say we want female unity. And a lot of the girls like to act as though they want female unity. But that will give us one moment. That's just only, it's a little moment. It's a little time and space. We don't want female unity. Nobody wants to see female unity. That does not sell. We want the drama. We want the controversy. We want the battle. Rap is a sport. All this teaming up to be girlfriends and besties, it's not going to work because once this fan says she's doing this better or she looks like this or this verse is better, the unit, the female unity starts to separate. Okay. Now we do a lot of this talking. Now you don't really see too many females that are really cool that's supposed to be, you know, showing unity. You've got Nicki Minaj beefing with falling out with everybody you've got um glorilla and jt they've done records together they don't they don't mess around with each other anymore hell the city girls jt and carisha please they're not even cool anymore you know cardi being Nicki minaj beefing uh cardi being ice spice allegedly throwing shade lotto and ice Spice. there's no unity here okay um since we're on the subject of Glorilla's new single, the rapper also addressed her relationship with JT and stated, me and JT ain't the best of friends, but we ain't beefing. Now, JT caught wind of Glorilla's single and the two rappers went at it on social media. Now, I'm gonna let y'all know this. I had got the inside T first. I got a phone call and the girls had told me that at the VMAs, JT, Glorilla walked up to JT to speak to her. JT had a nasty attitude and Glorilla ended up swinging and hitting JT with a purse. Once I had put that information out, JT acted as if that didn't happen. However, Glorilla then came out with a song talking about how she was slapping rat bees. Now, JT didn't like that Glorilla mentioned her in her latest record, and that's when they started fighting, basically saying, and then Glorilla said, hey, you know what? You a P, and I slapped you. And so the, it just got really, really messy. So at the end of the day, I'm here for the rap beef. I'm here for the shade, and we're going to keep watching it. All right, Al, what are your thoughts on Armand's hit list? <clears throat> oh, I thought it was cool. Good job, Armand. You know, you're teaching me, so that works. I do know with Nicki Minaj and Sexy Red, you know, Nicki Minaj and Drake, they keep their finger on the pulse with these young artists, and they will do a collab, and, and you know, it keeps them connected and i think it's smart i'm sure it'll be a number one 
Um, I know people think I don't like Nikki. I just don't like some of her antics, but her music is off the chain. Like I said, F the club up. I love that song. I will say this. You know, I kind of agree with the sentiments about Nikki and Cardi getting together, which probably it won't happen. But I love the one song where they did. They weren't really in the studio together, but uh, Motorsport. That is my song. Like, I love when they were both in that song. I thought that song had great energy. Like, there was, you know, like a little, it was more of a friendly battle there. Like, you know, who's going to have the hot, hot bars? I loved it personally. So I'm I'm not mad about it. They're both, like, I like them, you know, their, their music, both of them. So, all right. Good job. Let's get back to some topics. Uh, a fan is questioning Sexy Red's intentions after she was turned away from making a high school appearance due to smelling like marijuana. Check this out. A lot of these new age artists target kids with very hypersexual and explicit content. I feel like my point is proven seeing that mm, she's mad she can't go into a school. Because why as an adult entertainer whose music is on the verge of <laughs> erotica, would you even think it's appropriate for you to show up at a school and then show up like that? Smelling like marijuana with your cleavage hanging out. Baby, you wouldn't even be able to go visit your baby daddy in prison looking like that all right do you guys agree and should parents start monitoring who their kids are idolizing as role models al what do you think about this oh that's so hard right I, I don't know how much how much um monitoring they can do but i think they definitely need to be a part of their kids life if they do choose a role model like sexy red my question here was do parents this is telling my age maybe uh or mom can tell me or even you claudia I thought back in the day when we had assemblies, we had to get a permission slip from our parents agreeing that it was okay to go to that assembly. Do they not do that anymore? I'm just asking, they, do they not do that anymore? Because to know. me, to, this is just my, in my opinion, uh, Sexy Red is not for children consumption and definitely shouldn't be for children consumption down at the schoolhouse. I mean, like, like she said, this is basically borderline erotica. What she talks about is, is, you know, sex. She talks about STIs. She talks about her baby daddy being in prison. Like I, I personally would say, I don't want my kids. I would want to know and give permission for my kids to, to attend an assembly like this. Another part is why would Sexy Red want to talk to kids? Maybe they buy her music. So that would make sense why she wants to be there. They do buy her Okay. They do buy her music, right? Right. But that is part of the problem. Like, if I was a parent, I, but my kids would not know who Sexy Red is, but they do in TikTok and all right. that. She's very relevant with kids. I was horrified the first time I saw kids like bend that over, let that like sing along with Sexy Red songs. They should, and the fact that schools are booking her, they're part of the problem too. Armand, what do you think about this? Yeah. Uh, I, honestly, as much as I love Sexy Red, I think that I have to start with you guys. This is crazy because at the end of the day, a schoolhouse is a schoolhouse. Whether those kids are going to find out who Sexy Red is or not, they find that on their own time. I get right. schools try to be cool, try to have fun, keep the people engaged. But what you? how can the students be singing those lyrics at an assembly? Like, all of her <laughs> lyrics yeah. are explicit. Some of her biggest yeah. songs are very ex explicit. P-Pink and Booty Hole Brown and all, like, you cannot be saying that at an assembly, you know? So I right. do think that that, you know, a sexy red is not what you bring to the school or to the kids. And sexy red, it's a little ignorant to be going to the school smelling like weed. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And try to do a performance. Like, come on now, you gotta class it up at some point. Like, I don't know. Trinity now, wait said, a minute, Claudia, did you have I, to have permission slips to go to assemblies where you lived? Well, they, they never asked my parents about the guests, but we also weren't in these kind of times. Like, our guests would be a police officer from, oh. <laughs> if you want to talk, or, you know, uh, we have some comments. Uh, Trinity said, Sexy Red is not an icon. She is nothing but a hoochie from the hood that will continue to send Black women back years. Brian Hart said, Nikki won't be with Sexy Red because she's sexy as a blood, a red blood. Okay. Uh, Danny said, who invited her? Uh, Daybreak25 mm. said, I don't want Sexy Red around the kids. And Ancestors Dream said, Sexy Red is destroying the youth because why show up like that on purpose? And Queen Almighty Preach said, I wholeheartedly agree with her. Shame on the school for having her knowing what kind of music she promotes. I mean, even if you weren't aware of Sexy Red, now she comes to your school, you're going to go home and Google her and, 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 and learn about Booty Hole Brown. Well, the problem is, and I hate to do this to my people, like, but... We are the teachers now, right? And so yeah. we're the principals. Are my are my age group? We're the teachers. So now, but we listen to Sexy Red. So we like. I, I want to go to the Sexy Red concert. I just have her come to my job. So we're thinking a little okay. bit more selfishly right now. 
and not about the children. You know what I mean? We're thinking, I want to see Sexy Red as the teacher. So yeah. let's have her come. You know, yeah. that's kids, what's happening. I feel like this. these kids are dealing with these ratchet teachers as well. Yeah. Okay. Like, what are you I care now. I got to stand up for my teachers now. You can stand up for your teachers. I'm just don't stand up for teachers the... aren't ratchet. Don't, let's not do wait, that. Wait, 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 wait. They have sexy red books. They are ratchet. Oh, you talking about those? Oh, well, we don't know that the teachers. My teacher. brother's a teacher. We don't know like, that no. the teachers book. I'm, I'm, we don't know that the I'm teachers book. Teachers book. But whoever coordinated this. But I'm not saying teachers in general out. are ratchet. I'm saying the ratchet teachers, the ratchet people that are in charge of this kind of stuff. Like, let's, we do have ratchet in every department. It's infiltrated. Coming up next, Bambi is accusing Lil Scrappy of a violation. And later, a Texas nurse and her husband are facing some sick charges. We'll be right back. Freedom. It's at the core of who we are. The freedom to live without fear. To jog where we please. To wear a hoodie. The freedom to breathe. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this. I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You're going to get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> this one's for the real ballers and shot callers. The sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps, and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. My mom wanted my life to be better than what she had as a kid. When I became a mom myself, I feel like my whole world changed. You don't have to be a climate scientist to want to protect the earth. You always want the next generation to have something better than what you had. One of Welcome hurt. back to TJF. You know, what? we didn't do this at the top of the show, but we have got to give props to Dawn, Coach Dawn Staley and the South Carolina Gamecocks for winning the Women's Basketball Championship. They did their thing. And uh, I, I, too much is being said about second place, and we're not going to do that here. We celebrate the winners. And I, I just, I, I just, she, undefeated season and doing her thing. And Al, you said the highest paid. Listen, she's one of the basketball. highest paid, one mm -hmm. of the highest coaches female coaches paid in uh, on the collegiate level. And also shout out to Dawn, but she and I went to school together. We had classes together. We hung out together. She, is, she went to the University of Virginia and graduated the same year I did. Very proud of you, beautiful, and keep up the good work. Congratulations to her and the entire team who did their thing. And uh, if the mainstream media don't give you props, you know we will here at TGIF. All right, y'all, listen, speaking of props, we want your credit to have props. So, you know, bear with us as we give you some tea to help you out. If I told you there'd be massive savings on that new car in about three weeks, you would wait, right? Of course you would. And you'd gladly wait three weeks to save tens of thousands of dollars on a new home or refi or save hundreds on a major kitchen appliance. Now, how is that possible in three weeks? In a word or two, Scoremaster. Three weeks is how fast the average Scoremaster user takes to build their credit score and add up to 40 points. Now, why wait months or years to build your credit score a few points when it's doable in three weeks with ScoreMaster, simply go to scoremaster.com before you apply for a loan, credit card, or finance anything. In about a minute, ScoreMaster will reveal how many plus points you can potentially add to your credit score. Visit scoremaster.com slash T and try it for free for seven days. Yes, free. That's right. That's scoremaster.com slash T. Scoremaster.com slash T. Y'all know I got my house this past year and my credit is very, very good right now. 
And Scoremaster, I became a, a client once we started talking about Scoremaster. Al, what do you think about Scoremaster? I think I think it's a brilliant idea on so many levels. Like I shared before, Scoremaster will share with you what you can do to bring your a credit score higher. It'll send you notices. It'll tell you if your ratios are off balance. And the other thing I liked about I like about Scoremaster, say for instance, you're in the market for a car and you want to give yourself three months to get your credit score up so that you can get a better interest rate so that over the life of the car, you can save hundreds if not thousands of dollars. Scoremaster will help you uh, understand what you need to do in order to get your points up so that you can then alleviate the extra charges that normally you would have because of your low score. I think it's brilliant, and I like how it's user-friendly as well. All right, credit score changes, available points, or applying to any offers are not guaranteed and may vary. Promotional considerations furnished by Scoremaster. All right, y'all, let's get back to some topics. All right, Bambi is not here for little scrappy shenanigans. That's right, the reality star is calling out her ex-husband for violating their divorce agreement after his he allowed his girlfriend to post images of their kids. Now, do you think it's inappropriate to allow your new boo to post photos of your kids, especially when it's violating your divorce agreement? Or mom, what do you think? Uh, I do think that it's inappropriate, especially if it's a violation of the, uh, if you guys have an agreement and you violate the agreement. But at this point, it's like, if it's not anything harmful or detrimental or just, you know, explicitly or, or uncomfortable, like, move on, Bambi. Like, it's like, take us out the group chat. Like, I'm so over this. It's like, you want to move on, but you guys keep, you keep dragging him and Mama D's in it. And it's like, it's never ending. It's just like, girl, let it go. Move on, live your life, find a boyfriend and, you know, work it out. Like, I'm just, I just feel like we just keep being brought back into this scrappy Bambi thing and it's never ending. And it's like, there she's finding every little moment you know, to have a problem or throw his name into the media so that now we're talking about them again. And then it brings his mom into it. And then she's making records about it. And it's just like, girl, now they're fighting. It's just like, let's just let it go. If you really, truly want to be done and you're over it, like, don't let the little things be such a big deal. Like, if it's not really hurting your kids, move on, girl. Do you think it's a little thing, though, if it's mentioned specifically? In the yeah. <laughs> well, I okay. get it. You know what I mean? They probably, that's something that he probably sh should have fought when they were negotiating. But you know, divorce is ugly, right, Al? Like, what do you think about yeah, that? Yeah, absolutely. I think you're right, um, um, Claudia. It's in the agreement, and it's in the agreement for a reason, right? It's in the agreement because they know both of them are on reality television, which is a very big platform, and everything that they are allowed to do on social media is important right and also as a parent as a mother i can imagine that she wanted that in there to protect her kids and for me that's the worst part about all this especially with mama d leaning in and i just like mama d these are your grandbabies your grandbabies have to see you talking about the mother in this way they're at a certain age that they can they start to hear rumbles of this and on top of that you doing this to bambi she's not going to be at home talking positively about their grandparents especially not you know now that you're talking about you want to turn her what didn't she want to shoot her or something she wanted to shoot her and no the the just, the video she showed uh, her yeah. shoot a deer a, a deer but the animal. symbolism yeah. there mm -hmm. like I, I I just can imagine that that can't be anything healthy or creating a healthy environment for Bambi at home around her kids talking about the grandparents so I don't know I I I I feel like if it's in the divorce agreement if it was and he and she did something he didn't like he would bring it up if you know she clearly sees this this is a violation and she's bringing it up and she has a right to. I like all of them, and I, I like. I wish they would just all just get along. I know reality TV elevates things. That's the sad thing about reality yeah. TV, right? Like y'all could be cool, but then all it takes is some people online like saying some stuff, and then you write back. It just, you know, you think it's easy just to like not care, but it, obviously it's hard. And yeah, then it becomes tip a tat. Well, you got me last time over this violation, so I'm gonna get you about this violation. That's, and, that's and, what I feel like. It's really yeah. more about like. And would you guys say like? And I get like the safety thing. But to me, a little bit of this feels like I just, it's a power thing. Like, I don't want that whole posting my kids. Like, I don't want that uh -huh. woman posting my kids. Or you get what I'm, that's what it yeah. feels like more to me than like safety. It feels like you don't want a woman posting your kid. Yeah, and that, and that definitely, and parents will do that. Like, they're not going to be yeah. uh, that uh, easy to deal with, with, with you know, whoever you're like I'm sorry, like with Tiana Taylor and Iman. Tiana Taylor is enforcing that Iman cannot 
have a woman in his bed spend the night overnight or the kids see a woman in his bed. How ridiculous that sounds. She might be crazy or whatever, but it's the law. It's the law until he gets married, especially with their divorce agreement. It, it, until he gets married, he cannot, she can recommend or have enforced that he cannot have overnight guests that are not married to him and that the kids do not see a woman in the bed with him. Uh, we have a couple comments. Sunny Lovin said they both need to handle their business in private because we don't care. You need God to say, <laughs> don't post my kids. I'm not a celebrity. I don't know who's following you. It's a lot of creeps, predators, and weirdos out there. The girlfriend probably did it on purpose. Robin Rich said, must ask the parents to post their kids. Too many freaks out there. Uh, Fish Eye Jedi said, who is his new girlfriend? And I'm sorry, uh, said Scrappy is toxic, but I like him. And Perfect Peace, one, two, three, says, it's inappropriate. Those are not her kids. Yeah. All right. I hope they get together. Keep it locked because coming up next, find out what led a Texas nurse and her husband to wind up behind bars. And later, Michael Jackson's production company is fighting back. Keep it locked. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn. And she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official co Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of fire to the show. TGIF. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You don't get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Cause when women in tech come together, you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back. All right, a Texas nurse is facing serious charges after officials discovered videos on her husband's phone of her engaging in sex with their great Dane. Yeah. But it doesn't stop there. Her husband was arrested and facing charges for possession of child pornography. What are your thoughts on this sick story? Real quick, their kids ages 18 and 10, along with their three dogs, have been removed from their home. Al, what do you think? Oh, good. I think so. Now, the funny part is, it's not funny. He got caught at the grocery store jacking off. And because he was at the jack at the grocery store jacking off is when the police came and when they took his phone, they found the his wife having sex with with the Great Dane. Now, a lot is going on in this family right here. It just appears to me that it's just it was disgusting. It's disgusting to even be jacking off in a grocery store. Mm -hmm. It's creepy and it's gross, but she deserves to go to prison. Bestiality is against the law in most of the states. If not, I think it's 46, if not 48 of the United States, you cannot do bestiality because uh, animals cannot consent to having sex. So you technically are raping the animal. You're raping the dog. So this family gets everything that they deserve and i hope the kids find a, a family member that they can go to if not i hope the kids land somewhere safe so they won't be around this any longer and the dogs oh and the dogs yeah i forgot about the like, where would the dogs go they go to the shelter 
Can they go with the kids or no? They can probably go to a shelter and someone can. How are you having sex with a dog? Why? Yeah. Like, what is it doing? Like, you know what I mean? And I hate to be a, I hate to stereotype, but I'm just be honest. <laughs> they have a look like this type of characteristic. Like you see, like oh my god, she would sleep with a dog. You know <laughs> what I mean? What, you could what look is it at about, about her that you think? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just a certain look that you'd be like. You know what? She would let a dog hit. You know, he does look like he'd be in the grocery store. You know, masturbating on the on the on the, on the kids house somewhere. You know. Next to the, you know, gushers and nerds and the candy bars. Not you know gushers. what I'm saying? Like they have that look. And then the fact that they have a 10-year-old and an 18-year-old, what have those kids seen? You know what I mean? Are they, you know, like, so who knows? Are those kids been touched upon too? Because they said the guy was over there in the in the store following kids doing it. So it's just really, really weird. But those kind of, I hate to say that, but these kind of white people, they have that look. <laughs> They do. Y'all know that look. It's that look of like something ain't right. Either they are going to be sleeping with dogs or they're going to be out hanging black people. You know, what I mean? it's one or the other. But, you know, there's a little bit of pedophilia in both sides of that for me. Is it is the is it can't the 18 year old that that young lady's of age. Can't she take the 10 year old if she wants to? Yeah, hmm. you probably don't even know how to read and write. But right. you know, the crazy part is the, the here's the crazy part. The crazy part is the wife was a nurse. So could you yeah. imagine those are the kind of people that are giving you your health care? Yeah. This is crazy. I, I, as a woman, I cannot help, and this is going to be gross, but to think about her pH, pH levels have got to be through no. the roof. No. Like, that chemistry, first of all, you're having sex with your husband, okay? He's masturbating and doing all what he's doing. I, I don't know how clean he is. Then... You're having sex with a dog, and those fluids, it has to smell like an aquarium. Bath. Like, like, there's no way she's clean. There's no way she doesn't have an infection. There's no way she doesn't have constant BV or other infections. Ew. There's no way, ladies and gentlemen. And you can't put a condom on a dog. How do you sleep this with a dog? Gross. Like, And how do you force it to sleep? That's so disgusting. But they, I think they eat peanut butter, and then they, they build from that, I think. Well, I guess the question is, what type of sex? Yes, what type of sex? What type of I've sex seen a girl you? give no a BJ. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> hey, say that's drawing the line. Okay, this is another topic. <laughs> we're not mature enough, so we're gonna move yeah, on. Yeah. A woman shared her dating experience after uh, her a man accused her of catfishing. Take a look. He was like looking confused, and he told me to sit down. So I sat down. I smiled, and he didn't smile back at me. And then he was like, I don't look like my pictures. I do look like my pictures. I don't Photoshop anything. I tell everything how it is. He didn't even want to pay. I said, hey, I didn't bring my money with me. And then he eventually paid. And then now he cashed. He, he sent me a request to pay for the food. And that's not. I just don't understand. Why are men like this? First of all, I'm going to go first on this one. Okay. The question is, do you think the man was wrong and have you ever been catfished or accused of catfishing? Ma'am, I think for this video, it would have had a better effect if you would have been more presentable in this video. Because in this video, you're giving like, I just threw a, a, a skull cap on, I just went outside. And it's like, it's not making people be empathetic to you because mm -hmm. people are going to be judging. They're going to be like, well, you look like Biggie Smalls here right here, okay? Now, does that mean she doesn't deserve love? No. Does that mean that that guy should be mean to her? No, he should not. But like you would help your case if you at least you can look presentable, do your hair. Look, you don't have to be sexy like that, but like pull it together a little bit. You know when you're presentable and I'm tired of us acting like we don't know what that means. And if you say someone doesn't look presentable, if they have a bonnet on or or house shoes in the airport, that you're somehow some kind of elitist or racist or nothing like that. No, you know, you, what did your grandmother tell you when you were younger? Go by what she used to say, because to me, we were on point now. Him sending her a cash request, I think that was really rude and really mean. But I just wish she would have came on this video, like maybe closer to how she looked on the date, so people can be a little bit more empathetic to her story. Because I do think the story is messed up, but I think she looked a mess in that video. And you should look like your video. I, I met a guy one time online. He was fine as hell. And when I seen him in person, 
I realized he had photoshopped his hairline about four inches <laughs> forward. It was back here. And that made me be like, feel away. So you have a right to be like, expect the person to look something like them. It, it was this far. It was like this much, you guys. Okay, sorry. Whoever want to go first, please. I'll, I'll jump in here. Here's the thing. Well, let's just be honest. Like, she is a little touched. Now, we know that that's clear. So... Um, with you have to, I feel like we got to give her a little grace because she's a little touched. But I feel like she do look like her picture. The problem is what she posted and what she wore to the date yes. was just off uh, because she looked older. Like she didn't, she should have kept the same wig on at the date that she has in the pictures. You know, like I just think that she looked like an older version of herself on the date because she had, she went for the natural look which she probably should have threw the wig on with the bang. You know what I'm saying? She went all natural and it was real short to the scalp. And so I think that may have threw the man off because it wasn't really soft. She was sexy in the picture. Her picture, yeah. she, she looked good. And then I think when she showed up, you're right. I forgot about that. The picture when she showed up, she was giving more matronly. And yeah. then the video she did after it didn't help because then the video after she just was like, I don't care. Um, Al, this think? is giving more P Valley. She was giving more color purple. You know what? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> I think, you know, as far as I'm concerned, I think it's 2024. <laughs> and am I the only one that wants to FaceTime or or Zoom or IG video chat before I meet somebody that I met oh, online? You have, I'm, you have I'm, to not, right. yeah, I'm not I'm with you. I, I think you got to be a special type of slow to get catfish with all these technology and platforms out here nowadays. And I wouldn't go on just pictures before I agree to take someone out to dinner and pay for dinner and stuff. I need we need to FaceTime. We need to talk. <laughs> you know, I need to see your face like I need more pictures. So I don't know. This this was all just kind of weird and, and, and attention seeking to me. Yeah, y'all, she did, like, she wasn't, I will give her that, it wasn't a whole bunch of filters and, like, recreating her face in her pictures. She didn't do that. But how she showed up was crazy. Like, show up to your date, being close to, like, what you represented online. I think you yeah. owe each other that. That's and not just the women. I think both people owe each other that. Show up the way you were representing yourself online. Because, you know, it happens. Uh, Fish-eyed Jedi said, yeah, she was supposed to show up looking like Tasha Scott, not Leslie... <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that. Yoni Jacob said the picture of her that night, she was dressed up, but she just had the natural hair up in the picture. Look, she looked older. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, and, and uh, Tam B Dan said, treat her like a lady, a lady for at least that one day. If he didn't want to pay, he should have just parted ways on site. Okay. You know what? This is why people don't date anymore. No one does anything anymore. They just. Would you have stayed? I gotta say, I don't think I would have. I don't think I would have stayed. I, I would have been nice, but I don't think I would have. I would have, you know, done a whole dinner. Okay. Oh, you know what? We gotta go. But uh, we'll. I'm sure we'll talk more about this kind of stuff coming up. Michael Jackson's production company is fighting back against his accusers. Stay tuned. My mother was always very familiar with her neighborhood, but one day she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual, and uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or, or turn, and she wasn't even really sure where she was at. It was very unsettling for her. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you, and we'll figure it out. Please welcome Al Reynolds and our new official mm -hmm. co-host, Armand Wiggins, who has brought lots of mm -hmm. fire to the show. T-G-I-F. To be here, being unapologetically me on a platform like this, I'm happy to be here, and I can't wait to make magic with you guys. Every weekday. I knew you were the right person because you make me want to be better as oh. a host myself. So thank you for that. On Fox Soul. You gonna get graphics from time to time. <laughs> That's part of being part of the TGI family. <laughs> This one's for the real ballers and shot callers, the sisterhood of women in tech. They're discovering cures, building apps and programming the blockchain. They're CEOs, worldwide hustlers who can make it rain. They're tearing down the old boys club and seeing big gains. Because when women in tech come together, 
you know they make that change. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. Welcome back to the show. I see in the comments people thinking this is pre-recorded. It's not. So GC Boy 16 says this is not live. It's pre-recorded. Uh, I just proved you wrong. I'm all about proving the facts tonight and having evidence <laughs> and being factual in the things that you say so you don't get a letter from a lawyer. You know what I'm saying? Like we gotta yeah. like do a better job of like not like you know putting out lies out there. So you know, I want you to really know the truth. And I, we Fox, so I don't know about other people. But we like to come with a receipt or two to kind of back our claims. <laughs> you are yeah. loving this. I love watching you in this bag because you are in a, you're in a I'm, mood right now. You're loving yes, it. I'm sick of it. I'm you sick are of loving it. it. I'm sick of it. <laughs> Rarely do you get like justification or you get justice. So when you get a little bit, you're like, okay, like don't, don't, don't. Yeah. all right, let's move on. Michael Jackson. Uh, his production company is fighting to prevent his accusers, Wade Robson and James Savechuck, from getting access to his criminal file. MJ's production company believes that they want photos of the late pop star's genitals, which are in the file. Can you believe this? What? What? Al, why? What's going on here? I, I, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't like it though. I mean, are these the same? These are the same guys from 20 years ago, right? Yes. And I, who knew that you could still sue? the estate after he's he's dead and gone. I don't, this, this, this feels like a money grab to me. It feels like they, they won't say, you know, they won't take no for an answer. See, I don't know enough facts around it, but I, something about it just feels icky to me and I don't like it. I don't have a lot of facts about this, but I do have an opinion. And I will say this, what the hell do you want Michael Jackson's genitalia pictures? If you were so traumatized from said molestation, why would you ever want to see that again? That's suspicious. To me, if I was molested by somebody, the last thing I think I would want to see is that person's genitals because I think it would trigger me and remind me of my alleged rape, my alleged mm -hmm. molestation. Mm -hmm. So you wanting it is giving memorabilia. This is my opinion of my opinion. Memorabilia, souvenir. Why do you, what do you need the pictures of Michael Jackson's peen for? Wade and James are suing the production company after alleging the pops are sexually molest them as kids. I it, uh, I agree. Professor Cutie Pie said it's giving broke. Armand, what do you think? I feel like it's giving money money grab for sure. And like I could be wrong here, but I feel like wasn't something about this situation like where they came out and said this was like all a lie or was made up or wasn't yeah. this was this yeah. it? He's I think I think one of the guys, it was multiple guys, and I think one of the guys came out and said that it was made up. Yeah, so it's like, I just feel like, leave Michael Jackson alone. But I think I think it's also very interesting that you can, am you can amass so much fame and success, and even in death, people are trying to now get your mm. penis picture. Like, yeah. what kind of fame and power is that? That's great. I would never want that amount of success. <laughs> It's crazy. Well, I, think this, I think also this is a humiliation play, and they're also yeah. just trying to discredit his entire legacy. legacy. And that's the part that feels gross to me, and I think it shouldn't be allowed. And let's just keep in mind, a reminder, he was never found guilty of any molesting as he was alive. So, right. Real quick, a woman is suing a nail salon in Portland after claiming that she caught herpes during her appointment. The woman claims a nail tech didn't use gloves during the process and stood over and stored tools in an Altoids mint container. What are your thoughts? We don't have a lot of time on this, but what do you think about this, uh, Aman? Uh, I'm no MD, but I didn't know. I didn't realize you can get herpes like this. So I, that makes me very nervous. So uh, yeah, I, I think that this is weird. I think this, I, I, I personally, I'm gonna be honest. I don't think that she got herpes from the nail place. I think she probably got it from somewhere <laughs> else. And the outbreak just started to happen after she got from the nail place. Because let's just be honest. Like, you didn't get the herpes from the nail salon, girl. You had a wild night a few days ago prior, and you started seeing the symptoms appear. Now you're trying to blame them and trying to get a money grab. That's what but I feel like. Was it in her eye? Was it around her eye, Al? But no, it, was it was genitals. Her, it was on her hand. It was on her hand. She had blisters on her finger. She had what was called hepatic whitlow. Hepatic whitlow on her pants. It was from the nail salon. 
So she had okay. blisters on her fingers. Okay, so basically we can't do anything anymore. We can <laughs> Well, the funny thing net. about this story was this particular salon, the brand had been written up three times before by the by the board, the the cosmetology board or whatever board you have. Okay. Well, herpes on the hand is new to me and uh, yeah, I never heard a that. great alibi, ladies and gentlemen, if you do catch it. All right. I want to thank my co-host Al Reynolds and Armand Wiggins for joining me tonight. Thanks for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for Foxhole's Face Off. We'll see you back at tomorrow and watch those filthy nail salons because that's disgusting. All right. Bye. Tell the truth. Good night. Sir.